You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Welcome to episode 275 of Teach Better Talk Podcast. My name is Ray Hewart. I am here with the one and only Jeff Gargas. And I don't know, happy July. I don't know. What's up? So How are you doing? Two things. Two things. One, 275 is a lot. But I said it right, right? That number was oh, a lot. No, 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 no. It's just a lot. It's just, I was just okay. like, wow, that's a lot. Two, yeah. for a half second there, for a half second, I was like 98% sure you forgot your name because you're like, my name is Ray Hewart. You didn't pause that much, but like, you were like, my name is, and I was like, what? And you're like, my name is, and I'm like, who? Does anybody know Eminem? No, that's a throwback. Anyway, for a minute there, I thought you didn't quite remember who you were. And I, it was going to be really I fun do. had you like introduce yourself as like, if you were like, my name is Jeff Gargas. Nope, definitely yeah, not. So. Nope. Yeah, just, just to confirm for the world, I I know my name. I wanted to pause for for emphasis, um, Ooh, but okay, I am I, like that. I am aware of my name. I can spell it as well. It's it's really cool. It's also part of my email address. I mean, I'm all around. Everybody's wondering. It, it is R A E. Just just I, and I'm saying that because I get a lot of emails to other because like if if you email something at teachbetter.com and that email doesn't exist, it comes to me. And a mm-hmm. lot of times, there's some really interesting ways that people try and spell Ray. Well, it goes like R E Y. That's because of the new Star Wars movie. That's yep. not so new or anymore. R A Y sometimes. R A Y. It could. I've also seen R E A. R E A comes a lot. Um, yeah. I'm trying to. Th- there was one that came through that was like so mind boggling. I had to look at it for a while, and I'm like, no, okay, I, I kind of get how they got there, but I don't remember what it was. Like R A E Y. And oh, there was oh. an I. Yeah, it was R A I. Yeah. R A I. Which is a unique one. Ah, so now Here's this... really the story, guys. My name is Rachel, R-A-C-H-E-L. I took out the C, the H, and the L, put them together, Ray. There you go. Definitely. I don't think I've ever heard you actually say my name is Rachel. I don't go by Rachel. Unless you're my father, don't call me Rachel. I don't respond to it. Like, if we were in a crowd and there was an emergency and you needed me and you called me Rachel, I would not even turn around. That That's legit. That's legit. I'm like... I'm having a moment right now. I can't believe it's is this real? Like your dad we would be so just, happy. But Rachel on the Teach Better team. We have a Rachel on the Teach we Better do. team. We do. And she gets and Rachel. Like me... you don't get Rachel back. She's too awesome. No, yeah, she like, gets Rachel. That's, that's, she's my you... favorite person on the team she these is. days. She's wow. And, uh, she's yeah, yeah, she is. But did, did you awesome. know? But did you know that she goes by Ray? And she, she does not. Really? No, she does in her personal life. And I told her I'm like, too bad there's already a Ray of the Teach Better team. <laughs> Uh, so, so she but she spelled R A E too. Or yeah. Is spelled, yeah? Oh, yeah. No kid. Is yeah. it because she like has stalked you for a long time? Have we looked into that? Is that like oh, a thing? That's creepy. No, I don't. <laughs> I think she's just a normal functioning human being. That's so happened okay. to have a nickname. That's good to know. Yeah. Good to know. Interesting. Anywho, what what else is up? I think we should talk about that thing that's going on that just started. Your name? Yeah, I know. We're into that. Oh, no, the that's other not thing. It. The uh, the Edupreneur Mastermind. Is that because we were talking? Is that what you're talking about? Because we talked about that beforehand. No, yeah. I know, but it's 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 started. So, it's mid July when is. this episode comes out. It's, it's rocking and rolling. Yeah. So tell me about it, Ray. What is the Entrepreneur Mastermind? It's some really great idea <laughs> I had that I got approved. <laughs> oh, that's okay, how guys. Everything works. All right. So here's the deal. Jeff had an idea. We kind of let him, like you know, move forward with it. Then it turned to this. Oh, it was big deal. Good job, Jeff Gargas. Great idea. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? Anyway, yeah, so so we just got started. Super exciting. So this is um, a mastermind. So if you don't know what mastermind is, mastermind is essentially just a meeting of people that are coming together as one mastermind, right, together to work on problems, to, to provide support, to provide feedback, to provide accountability, and work together to grow. So this is for anyone who's considering themselves an entrepreneur. And that yeah, that's a, there's a wide spectrum of, of that. That could be someone who – go ahead. You've got the finger Wait, thing. Yeah. Can we preface? We do have an administrator mastermind that's been yes, going for a separate. long time. Yeah, this is different. This is yes. different. So if you're an administrator or in a leadership role, you can still participate in the admin mastermind. That still exists. This is a that's new mastermind thing, yes. being brought to you by Teach Better Team. Go ahead. Very important. And that is still happening on Tuesdays. 
two different yep. times. Twice, so yes, that's twice it. on Tuesdays. This is brand new. This is for those who consider entrepreneurship entrepreneurs, which can be anything from someone who maybe is um just releasing a book and trying to promote like the mission and the and the, the movement of the book to someone who maybe who has a TPT store or does some blogging and trying to grow a consultant or does speaking or, or, or someone who's trying to grow like a, a whole education business, whatever it is. Um, and it's started off. It's going pretty well. We've got an awesome group of entrepreneurs in there. We meet every Monday at 6 p.m. Eastern time. You can learn more at teachbetter.com slash edupreneur. Um, this is slightly different in the sense that this is a not as much of a like drop in, drop out, like show up when you can. This is more of a commitment. This is a... We're meeting every week. You're committing to this. We're holding each other accountable. We're, we're we're providing critical feedback. We're working for each other. We're becoming that support. Um, we've got a Voxer group. We've got a, a Facebook group dedicated to this, where so the communication continues all the time. So super excited about something. You know me. I love this. I love talking about this stuff. I love sharing this stuff. And honestly, as as well as you do too. Like you do this all the time with educators as well. And so we kind of just made it more official now. I think is what really no. Happened, so. Well, and I think I like that part. Like we were already naturally meeting with people that wanted to talk shop. I mean, clearly we are a part of, you know, supporting educators and a little bit more of a business capacity, whether we, we kind of ignore that all the time because, but we do exist. Like we do make money. That is how we There's continue to pay, yeah, you're right. yeah. to pay the incredible staff we have, right? They're doing incredible work. We need to, you know, pay them for their time. And so it's fun to be able to share ideas with people that, have big audacious dreams. Everything I know I learned from you, Jeff. So it's good that you're continuing Ray, will you, to will you, share your insight. Will you join us one Monday and be like a special guest? Can we do that? Like, can I get that I'd commitment be, on air right now? I'd be honored. Please. I would love to. Yeah. We're going to do that. So if you are interested, if you're an entrepreneur and you're looking to, to, to grow whatever it is that you grow and you're looking for some support, some some honest but loving feedback with a group of others that are doing trying to do the same thing that you're doing, uh, please come join us. It's over at teachbetter.com slash edupreneur where you can get registered and join are us. Are you What's intentionally, up? I mean, we shouldn't probably, but are we intentionally not telling them like the other surprises we have in store for them that we set up last week? Okay. Let's not talk about that. But in addition, once you sign up, like there's some, there's some cool stuff we got. We got planned for you. Just say it's a cool little community. You should come join. <laughs> yes. Just, I'm going to leave it at that little bit of suspense there. So come on and join us. Uh, super excited about that. So also super excited about this uh, episode of the podcast. You met this gentleman a while back and you just talked him up like crazy. And he absolutely did I not. I really didn't. like Paul. He's a good dude. He did not disappoint. Just a good, a good episode. Uh, so Paul is a, he's a national board certified teacher. Um, he's, he's a keynote speaker that speaks all over. He's a, a consultant, author of two books with a third one on the way. He writes for um, he's he's written for places you might have heard like Edutopia or Ed Surge, uh, Learning Forward. Uh, just a good guy sharing some really good messages. I really enjoy his stories. I just like him. I, I said right off the bat, like you kind of you you say it's been a while since I've heard you say this, but like you could hear his passion oozing through the speakers, like right mm. off the bat. And I really love that. So very good. He's guy. also writing for that that one blog you've probably heard of at teachbearer.com slash blogs. I don't know if you've ever heard of it. Oh he yeah, I've I've too. been there. Been there before. Yeah. yeah. Nice nice little Visited. place. Cozy. Yeah. yeah. Cozy. <laughs> I'm really cozy. But let's get into this, this episode. Is our blog cozy? All right, yeah, let's do it. All right, we're gonna have episode two hundred and seventy five with Paul Emmerich France. What's up, Teach Better family? It's Jeff and I wanna make you aware of another amazing webinar series kicking off on August second. This is two weeks, four sessions with the amazing Ray Hewer. During these four sessions, you're going to learn how to build an intro mastery grid for use with the Grid Method Mastery Learning System. You're going to get example grids, templates, lifetime access to the replays of all the sessions, live coaching. This is something you do not want to miss. This is going to be an incredible webinar series. You can take so much away from this that you can put into action right away getting ready for the next school year. So head over to teachbetter.com slash summer intro grid and get registered today. All right, we are here. We are chatting with Paul. And Paul, man, it's so awesome to have you on the podcast. Super excited to dive in. And learn more about you and learn about your story. But before we get too far into things, how are you feeling today, man? I'm feeling great. I'm just so excited to be here. Thanks for having me. Oh, I'm so stoked. I've been waiting to record with you, Paul, because we had connected via a message you sent me on Instagram. Then we had a Zoom call and realized like we have so much in common. So I'm really excited to dive more into your story and also learn about all the things that you are supporting educators on, because I'm really hoping our network connects with you. So before we get into all that fun, I would love to have you share a little bit about yourself, kind of answering that age old question of, hey, Paul, what do you do? 
Yeah, that's an awesome question to ask right now because I feel like I'm at this really um, exciting, sometimes scary, um, certainly empowering, uncertain point in my career. Um, I, I, I'm a teacher, you know, by trade. I'm a national board certified teacher. I'm a literacy specialist, um, and I spent ten years teaching elementary school. Um, and I left it, left the classroom, I should say, in in August of 2020 because of COVID, as I know a lot of people, a lot of teachers around the country did. Um, and um, you know, it was scary, and um, it's been challenging. But I took a risk on myself, and I started my own teaching practice. So I've got um, about 20 students I work with privately now, um, doing some consulting work. I'm working on my third book. Um, which I'm really excited about as well. Um, so what I do is, you know, I, 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 um, I, I think of myself as someone who helps teachers, parents, students um, humanize learning. And that's what's, what's really important to me right now. And what that means to me is that, you know, through learning, I believe that all of us should become more human and more in touch with our humanity through the process of learning. And so that's what I do right now and i love it i love that i can feel like ray says this every now and then he'll talk she'll talk about like like passion oozing through i feel like i can already feel that from you so it's oh. really excited i want to ask you about the books because you mentioned the books so i knew there was two out and you mentioned a third so i want to get in there but first i have to ask ray what was the message that he sent you on instagram was it like hey jeff is really cool think you can introduce us or was it something different am i am i oh, misreading see, that yeah it was almost like that see he <laughs> messaged me and i said Hey, do you know my friend Jeff Gargas? And he's like, who? And that's kind of where we knew we'd get along. Awesome. Okay, just want to make sure we got that story correct. That's that's good to know. A uh, little little below to my ego, but whatever. Um, no. So, uh, Paul, let's talk, let's talk about the books. So you have two out right now. You're working on a third. Can you give us sort of the overview of of the books, the two that are out, and maybe give us a little preview of what what's to come? Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, so I um, went to San Francisco in 2014. To work for a technology um, an education technology startup company a network of micro schools dedicated to personalized learning um, and um, you know at first when i was working there i was i was really excited about this idea of personalized learning um, we were our, our charge there was to open schools build to build um, personalized learning tools you know and otherwise try to personalize learning at scale for larger groups of children and to make a very long story short, and if you want to read the whole long story, you can read my first book, Reclaiming Personalized Learning. Um, but to make a lo really long story short, you know, I realized that uh, a key mistake we were making there was we were centering technology um, while trying to personalize learning. When you know, personalized learning really should be about who children are as human beings. Like if you look at that word personalization or personalized, right? The base of that word is person. You know, uh, and and I think that sometimes I think it's I think things are changing. I think it's getting better, but sometimes you know we make the mistake of over individualizing learning when we talk about personalization, and we forget that you know personalization should be a pedagogy for um, restoring humanity to our classrooms, especially right now after a really long arduous year. So that's what the first book is about: reclaiming personalized learning. It's about you know reclaiming that term not as a pedagogy of digitally driven learning, but as a pedagogy for restoring humanity and equity to our classrooms. Um, so that's the first book. And the second book is called Humanizing Distance Learning. And I wrote that shortly after I left um, my classroom in August of last year. Um, so I reflected on, you know, my experience with distance learning. But the the book, you know, I, I that that book in particular, I hope that it outlives, you know, this era. And it certainly isn't, you know, an endorsement of distance learning. I don't think any of us want to go back to that. Um, but I open the book with this question. Um, and the question is, shouldn't we in some ways always be teaching from a distance? And, and the idea is that that is, is a, you know, a double entendre of sorts that um, I, I noticed in myself when starting distance learning, you know, in March of 2020, that it was really hard at first. And it wasn't necessarily hard because of the technology for me personally. It was hard because I realized, wow, like I actually do a lot for my kids that I shouldn't be doing in the classroom. Like I, you know, I I will 
you know, turn, turn the page to the, or turn their book to the, to the page I want them to be on, or I'll, you know, I'll, I'll write something for them or whatever. And I think a lot of teachers are, you know, guilty of that, of, of doing things that engender dependent learning habits in students. And so while the book provides some distance learning tips, it really is about that idea of teaching from a distance and what that actually means um, in our classrooms. And then the third book I'm working on, which I'm super excited about is um, going to be on sustainable teaching. Um, and it relates, it relates in some ways to the distance learning book and to per the personalized learning book. Um, but I, I originally talked with ASC about this book or this idea about a year ago, and it wasn't until a couple months ago that we really, you know, pulled the trigger on it. Um, but I think that, you know, sustainability needs to be at the center of conversations we're having about this new era of teaching and learning, you know, historically, teaching has been unsustainable for lots of teachers, and that's why they leave the profession. And I don't, one thing I don't want to come from the book is I, I don't want this idea that like, you know, teachers, it's its within teachers control to make their jobs more sustainable or, or only within teachers control to make their jobs more sustainable. I think in some ways there are some practices we do. There are some things we've done historically like worksheet-based worksheet teaching or, you know, lecture style teaching or, you know, rote memorization. Those things I don't think are sustainable in the long run. Um, but we have to also acknowledge that there are systemic conditions under which all of us teach that make teaching sustainable. So really what I hope to do with the book is start a conversation about sustainability, both at the systemic level, but also down at the like classroom pedagogical level. Um, and I think I'm most excited about that book because right now I'm interviewing teachers and surveying teachers. I currently have teachers from 40, I think I'm at 48 states right now across the United States um, and close to 200 responses in my survey. And I just, want to talk to as many teachers as I can. And I'm just loving connecting with teachers about teaching. So it's been really exciting. That is awesome. It sounds like a really great book. And I know you, because you're awesome, we're going to give away a copy of your Reclaim and Personalized Learn, but we're going to do that a little bit later on in the episode. So stick around if you want a chance to win a copy of Paul's book for that. Paul, I want to dive in now to to always, what's always my favorite part, my favorite question of our podcast. And that's when we ask you to share a story with us. So I'd love for you to share a story about a time that you've had a failure in your life. Kind of take us there with you. What happened? How did you overcome that? And then what'd you pull away from that experience? Yeah. Man, I'm like, which one do I choose? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I do think about my time in San Francisco as a failure in some ways um, because I was, I, I just so, uh, that's the word wholeheartedly subscribe to that flawed definition of personalized learning. But I'm actually now thinking of um, something just came to mind um, for my first job when I was teaching in, I was teaching in a suburban school in Chicago and um, I um, trying to figure out how to make this long, very long story short, but let's to, 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 to make the long story short, I tried to do a lesson with my, um, with a colleague of mine on marriage equality at the time. So I guess I haven't said this about myself yet, but I'm an openly gay educator. I'm married to my husband, David. We live here in Chicago with our two adorable dogs, uh, Maya and Barley. Um, and part of my story has been, you know, bringing myself as an openly gay man into the classroom and like the challenges that come with that. Um, and um, so that year, that was just 2014, uh, 2013, 2014 school year, my um, colleague Marcus and I tried to do a lesson on marriage equality. It um, did not go over well, to say the least. And I look back on that, that moment and I, I think about things I could have done differently. Um, you know, I think um, it's hard to bring, a, you know, a relatively conservative community on board with something like that, especially when you're talking with, with about, you know, small children. Um, but I also just think about like the, the trials and tribulations of being a queer person in schools today. And, you know, um, to answer your question about, you know, overcoming it, it's, it's, it was really about like leaning on my team and leaning on my, the, the people I trusted at my school at the time to, you know, really make me feel safe and cared for. Um, and, you know, as comfortable as I could possibly be in, um, in that school. I, I eventually left that school because I, you know, because I, one, didn't feel safe there, but also because I, 
ended up getting this job in San Francisco. But, you know, I really did feel, even though some of it was outside of my locus of control, I really did feel like I, you know, I failed that year. I felt like I wasn't able to, you know, be an advocate for my community. And it was, it was really tough. But I think like, like I said, it's like, those are the times where you really lean on the people that love you and that you trust. Um, and I think I learned, you know, that change is, it's so gradual. Um, I, I feel so lucky now to be a part of a community of queer educators online. Um, and it, it's really, I think had I not had that experience and had I not felt like I just fell flat on my face and, you know, honestly, I felt really, really sad that year. Um, had I not had that experience, I don't think I would appreciate um, how many educators now have the courage to come out and just bring their whole identities into the classroom. And so I'm just super grateful for that. Super grateful that that community is, is there and able to support you and you're able to find those people that you could lean on that you could, that, that would support you and love you and that you're able to get through that, man. Yeah. Um, I want to flip it now to a, a successful moment. So same, same type of thing, share a story with us. Uh, tell us what happened. Why was it a successful moment for you? And then what'd you pull away from that experience? Yeah. Um, wow. Um, you know, I, I started my own practice last year, like my own business essentially. Um, and that was, you know, one of those super scary things. It was, I think we were all scared, you know, in 2020, we, there's so much uncertainty. Um, I, I just got to a point, you know, where I was like, I want to feel safe in my job. I want to feel fulfilled. I want to feel like, you know, I'm taking risks on myself. I want to feel like, I want to feel empowered, you know, to like create the world that I want to see. Um, and so I took the leap and just said, you know what, I'm going to try this. And I'm really grateful. I think like, I'm really grateful. I'm really lucky. Um, there is privilege in be, being able to do something like that. Um, I'm married to my husband who's awesome and has a great job and was able to, um, you know, get me health insurance, which is something that's really important to have, obviously. Um, but it went way better than I could have anticipated. I think I mentioned earlier, I have about 20 students I work with privately now. Um, I was able to write my second book and get started on my third. And, you know, it's, it's, it's funny because every day is, is different and every day is challenging. And every day there's this kind of uncertainty I have to grapple with. And some days I am way better at, at holding that uncertainty than others. But what I've taken away from, from it is, you know, there really are just no guarantees in life at all. Right. And even if you're, even if you're, you know, working in the same school for 20 years and it makes you super happy and you're getting everything you want from it, you know, things can change like that, like it did for all of us in 2020. So I'm really, I'm, I'm, my personal growth, I think that's come out of it is that I've learned how to sort of hold that uncertainty and count my blessings and, you know, just keep reminding myself that, that it's important to take risks on yourself. It's important to, to like love yourself in that way, to love yourself enough to allow yourself to, to try things and, and risk failure. Paul, I think it's so cool to hear kind of your your story of how you got into and how you continue to foster the work that you're doing. I mean, I mean, geez, like we do work in similar spaces. This idea of personalized learning and truly mm -hmm. reaching all learners in our classroom is something I hold so near and dear to my heart. And I really enjoy, and I know that like our listeners are, I'm sure experiencing this, but I really enjoy listening to you talk about it. I think you have such an incredible skill set. I can only imagine that you're incredible at coaching and supporting educators that you're working with. I can only imagine that, that the students you're working with are just going to continue to flood in and you're going to have to find a way to manage all that. But I think it's so wonderful that you've committed so much energy, so much time, so much risk. I mean, I, you know how it is. Um, but, but to supporting educators in making sure they can reach all their learners. I'm, I'm such a fan of that. When it comes to taking all that risk, though, I mean, all the, the, the choices that you've had to make to truly put students first in, um, in the future of what we hope education looks like, what's really keeping you excited right now about all that you're doing? Ooh. Um, 
You know, hope is like a funny word, right? Because I think sometimes when people, when people hear hope, they think of like the kind of warm and fuzzy hope. And I, when I think of hope, I think of, I do think of the warm and fuzzy feeling, but I also think of like that, that sort of like gritty feeling, you know, that because hope isn't always, it isn't always warm and fuzzy, right? Sometimes we're hoping for things because we really need the change. Um, and what, what's got me really excited right now is I just, I feel like there is this really big shift in our thinking. I feel like educators are becoming more courageous than, than ever, you know, I think partially because of the last year. Um, I think a lot of educators were, were not treated very well, um, you know, through the pandemic. And I think we're, we're witnessing this monumental shift. I mean, we're also seeing, right. We're seeing like a ton of educators of colors, voices being centered now in the conversation about anti-racist teaching, anti-bias teaching. Um, And that really excites me. You know, I I think as a queer person, right. And, and experiencing marginalization to see so many queer educators voices being centered now, it's, it's just, it's super exciting for me. Um, And I think it's only going to serve our kids well in the end, right. Because if we're, if we are finding ways to center our most marginalized voices, that means we're going to find ways to center our most marginalized students' needs as well. And, you know, in this conversation about personalized learning, right, that's the conversation we need to be having. How do we bring those kids that are on the, in the margins to the center and like really center them so we can support them? Because the reality is, right, our education system wasn't built with everybody in mind. And the sooner that we come to terms with that, and the sooner we have honest conversations with ourselves, the sooner we can fix it. Um, and so that that has me excited because we're st- I think we're starting to do that. And I just hope we keep holding ourselves accountable to doing that. Mm, I love that. Holding ourselves accountable so that we can continue to grow and be better for our students. So cool. So if you have one piece of advice, I know that this is kind of tricky because you've shared a ton of advice, but when it comes to like one piece of advice that you leave our listeners with during your episode of Teach Bear Talk podcast, what would be the one piece of advice that you'd want to share with teachers? Yeah, um, I think the biggest piece of advice I have is to just like cut out the noise in teaching, you know, like ask yourself and this kind of aligns with the, the work I'm doing with sustainable teaching right now. You know, we do a lot of things in our classrooms that don't really serve our students and don't really serve ourselves either. And it's not, I don't think, again, I don't think it's teacher's faults. You know, I think it's the the system sort of conditions us to do certain things and we have to make really mindful choices to stop doing those things. And so I think the, the, the advice is to ask yourself, like, is what I'm doing right now actually serving students or serving me as the teacher? If it's not, then, you know, I think you have to have a hard conversation with yourself or, you know, find a trusted friend or colleague that can help you reflect. Um, You know, for me, one of the things I I learned early on in my career was like grading this, this emphasis on, you know, point totals and letter grades, especially in the elementary setting, it was just creating all of this work, you know, and it was busy work for the kids and creating busy work for me and everyone's just doing busy work and no one's learning anything. Um, And so I think when you, yeah, when you have that honest conversation with yourself about like, is what I'm doing actually serving my students or is it, and is it serving me as a teacher? You can, you know, you can really make positive, sustainable changes. Mm, I love that advice. Cut out the noise. Loving it. Uh, All right, Paul, we're going to get into our six questions that I'm going to throw at you really quickly. But before we do that, let's give everyone a chance to, to get a copy of your book, Reclaim and Personalized Learning. Uh, here's what we're going to do. Let's, um, if you want a copy of that, if you want to be entered in a chance to win Paul's book, go over on Twitter and just tweet out and answer the simple question. What does, what does personalized learning to you? What does personalized learning mean to you? Make sure you tag at teach better team and hashtag teach better talk. And then Paul, what is your Twitter handle? My Twitter handle is at Paul underscore Emmerich, E M E R I C H. Make sure you tag Paul as well and you get a chance to win that. So awesome. Appreciate you doing that, man. That's really, really cool. Uh, let's get into this, this this next part. What I'm going to do is I'm going to throw these next six questions at you. And your goal is to answer each one in 15 seconds or less. Are you ready to go? Whew, I think so. What is one EdTech tool you cannot live without? Um, seesaw, because I feel like the possibilities are endless. 
Give us a, a book you're reading right now. You can give us up to three. I'm reading Street Data by Shane Safir and uh, Jamila Dugan. I recommend everybody read it. I'm also reading Culturally Sustaining Pedagogies, and it's a compilation of articles um, edited by Django Paris. Uh, who do we need to follow on Twitter or Instagram today? And you can give us up to three here as well. Um, I'm going to go back to Shane Safir and Jamila Dugan, and they're just at Shane Safir and at Jamila Dugan. What's a good YouTube channel, website, or podcast for educators to check out? Um, so my good friend, Matt Halpern, actually just started an early childhood podcast called Morning Meeting, and I absolutely love it. Matt is a hoot, and he's super smart, and he's just like everyone's dream kindergarten teacher, so you should go listen to Morning Meeting. Give us a daily, weekly, or monthly routine every teacher should get into. Oh my gosh, drink water. Just drink water. Every minute of every day, drink water. <laughs> I love it. What's the best <laughs> piece of advice you've ever received? Oh, um, it's probably speak to yourself in your most compassionate voice. And actually, when that advice was given to me, someone asked me, they said, who in your life do you speak to with your most com compassionate voice? And I said, my students. And she said, speak to yourself like that. Um, and it, it changed my life. Mm. Mm. I think that when you said it originally, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Great tip. Speak to yourself in your most compassionate voice. I got it. Then when you're thinking through, like, how do I actually speak to my students? Mm -hmm. It's a completely different mindset. Like, I kind of feel like you just blew my mind a little bit because it, originally I kind of was like, yeah, sure. Great advice. And now I'm like, oh, wait, the way that I speak to students is so different than what I was originally envisioning. Um, yeah. So really like and you that. might. You might even think of like, or when I think of it, right? Or when I think of that phrase, I actually picture a student's face. Like I, I remember one student from my first job who just really struggled a lot and needed a lot of encouragement. And I actually see her face. Um, and it does it like when you actually picture a person, it really changes how you, how you think of that. So, yeah. Mm. And can I also call you out, Paul, you dropped like nothing but incredible tips. And then his, his weekly routine is to drink water. Come on. Drinking water? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need to drink I'm more so, water. I'm so bad at it. Like, I am so bad at it. It's it's bad. Jeff, isn't it Mark Heller? I was just going to say our buddy Mark Heller is content. smiling right now. <laughs> yep. I'm Mark Heller. The, one of the best things I ever did podcast. was start focusing on my my water intake. You, you just, it, you feel better. You feel more healthy. Healthy. Yep. More Guys. Healthy. Yeah. Killing me. I know we've had this discussion a hundred <laughs> times. If you're listening right now, please tweet out. We also want to hear how much water you're drinking. All right. Paul, <laughs> I do want to make sure that everyone can stay connected to you. I know they're going on Twitter to try and win your book. And so they need to go connect with you there. But what are some other places that they also can stay connected to not only what you're sharing out, but also just like your books and everything else? Yeah. So, so yeah, I, I, you can find me on Twitter at Paul underscore Emmerich. You can find me on Instagram at Paul underscore Emmerich. Uh, my website is www.paulemrick.com. Um, and then a really great way to connect with me right now actually would be to do my sustainable teaching survey. Um, I have a, so far I've interviewed 40, I think it's 45 teachers um, about what sustainable teaching means to them and what it looks like to them. And I have almost 200 responses in my survey. And my goal is to get to a thousand um, by the end of the year. Um, so if you fill out my survey, not only is that a great way to connect with me, um, but it's also, um, we can also set up a time to actually chat if you want, want to be interviewed about sustainable teaching. So you can find that survey on my website at www.paulemmerich.com. Um, I also have it pinned to my Twitter um, right now, and um, I'm sure I can share it with, with you two or with um, Ray and Jeff as well, and we can, we can tweet it out that way too. Absolutely. We'll make sure that we do that. We'll make sure that's also included over, over in the show notes. So, you know, you can awesome. find all the links, all the resources, everything we talked about in this episode over at teachbetter.com and those show notes. So make sure you check, check that out. That includes all the links that Paul's mentioned, the, the links for connecting with him and keeping the conversation going. So make sure you head over to teachbetter.com for that. Make sure you hit subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes. And if you can give us a rating and review, we'd really appreciate that as well. And let's keep taking this one step further. Think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and connect with these amazing educators and just share this podcast with them. Paul, man, just an incredible episode. You're doing such great work and so many great things and just super excited to be connected. 
Uh, Ray was ranting and raving about you before you got on, and you did not disappoint. I'm super excited to to just get to know you more and continue to learn and grow with you, and I'm excited for others to do that as well. So thank you for taking some time and hanging out with us tonight. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Until next time, let's get out there and let's teach better.